First thing we're going to want to do is download the latest version of GZ Doom at time of recording that is 4.3.3. We'll also download Lickfurium's version of ZDL uh, 3-1.1 time of recording. Make sure you grab the Windows version of this. It says it's the one that says Win right there. Uh, we'll also grab a couple mods, uh, namely Brutal Doom, Tom Tefer's uh, extension, DHTP alterations. Do Metal Volume 5, I like the uh, 44.1 kilohertz resample. And we'll also grab the latest version of Reshade, which is 4.6.1. Uh, once you've got all that, first we'll extract GZ Doom to its own directory. I'll do that with a uh, 7-zip. Then in the GZ Doom directory, we're going to want to copy at least two Doom wads. doesn't matter which ones but you need at least two. We'll open up the GZ Doom EXE, and if you have at least two Doom wads in there, you should get the iWAD selection menu on startup. That's important because we're going to want to select load lights and load bright maps, and then hit play GZ Doom. Uh, really quick at the beginning here, I'm just going to turn sound volume down a bit and load into a level. As far as configuring, uh, in options, starting at the top, customize controls and action, we'll just clear all of the default bindings. I'm doing this quickly just by hitting the down arrow and delete key in rapid succession. Uh, the only keys you need to rebind are fire, secondary fire, weapon reload, use slash open, move forward, backward, strafe left, right, jump, crouch, and run. I also like to change my uh, weapon selection opposite of what it is default but that's personal preference next we'll go into mouse options I like to change the cursor to system cursor because it's easier to see overall mouse sensitivity to change to 0.5 if you have a high DPI mouse like me and the most important one here is always mouse look you need to turn that on so you can use the mouse to look around in the game We'll back out and go to player setup, change your player name because it's cool. I like to turn auto aim all the way down. Switch on pickup to off and always run on. Back out, then down to HUD options. Uh, all the way at the bottom of HUD options, turn menu dim to 0.00. .00. That way when we're changing uh, settings, it's easier to see exactly what effect they have. Back up at the top of HUD options, we'll go into scaling options. For messages, I like to turn that up to 3 or 4. Status bar down to scale to full screen, same with full screen HUD, and HUD preserves aspect ratio, turn that on. And we can back out down to miscellaneous options under options, and down to save slash load confirmation, turn that off. It makes quick saving and quick loading a lot quicker. Then down to display options, screen size I like to turn up to 11. Uh, with some odds it's cool to leave it on 10 because they've got uh, custom uh, HUDs at the bottom there which is kind of neat to play with sometimes. For the most part I prefer 11 though. Down to lost soul translucency, turn up to 1 which it should be by default but get into that later. Uh, rocket trails to sprites and particles, same with blood type and bullet puff type. Number of particles you can leave default if you've got a really good computer uh, you might want to turn that up and if you've got a really bad computer you probably want to turn that down especially if you notice that you're losing frames after killing a lot of monsters. Back up to the top we'll go to hardware renderer. Sector light mode I use software with fog mode on radial. Uh, I find that's the closest to the kind of uh, original doom lighting. Um, if you find that's too dark, try standard or even bright. And if that's still not bright enough, try turning fog mode off. But for now, I'm going to leave it on software with fog mode on radial. Enhanced night vision, I like to turn off. I find it saves some frames. Uh, adjust sprite clipping to smarter. Smooth sprite edges on. Fuzz style, I like uh, smooth noise. I can show you exactly what that does here. And summon Spectre. 
So uh, fuzz, the fuzz effect has to do with translucency, namely specters and the translucency orbs or the invisible orbs or shadow orbs or whatever they're called that they sometimes drop. I'll just kind of scroll through some of the fuzz styles here. You can get an idea of what they're like. I, uh, I use smooth noise because I find that it's the hardest to see. So it makes specters that much spookier. Uh, down to rendering quality, up to quality, menu blur to zero, and multi-sampling turn up to 32x. Uh, again, if you're on a less than perfect computer, maybe some lower specs, uh, multi-sampling is going to be one of the first things you're going to want to turn off or uh, at least down to get uh, some FPS back. Now, uh, in hardware rendering options into post-processing, Bloom effect on, lens distortion effect on, ambient occlusion quality up to high, portals with AO all the way up to 4, FXAA quality to extreme, dither output to 12 BPC, tone map mode I leave off, but it's kind of neat in some cases with some mods, so it's totally personal preference. Back out to display options again, and then we'll go down to texture options, texture filter mode to none, antistropic filtering to 16x. Enable high-res textures, yes. High-quality resize mode, I like XBRZ. High-quality resize multiplier, I like it on uh, 2x. It goes all the way up to 6. Um, uses more memory with each uh, each x you go. Uh, I like 2 because it still kind of looks like uh, a pixelated blocky look of the original Doom while still giving it a bit more modern feel. Uh, resize texture, sprites, and fonts, all on. Precast GL textures. This is an important one. You're definitely going to want to turn that on and sort draw list by texture. I'm not exactly sure what that does and turning it on or off doesn't really seem to have any effect on performance, at least on my machine. So I turn it on. Um, back down to display options and into dynamic light options. Uh, dynamic light software and hardware, both on. Light effects sprites, yes. Light effects particles, yes. Light shadow maps, switch to yes. Shadow map quality up to 1024 shadow map filter to PCF high. And then we're pretty much done for base GZ Doom configuration. Um, you can delete or move those uh, two Doom mods back to wherever you, wherever you want them, but you don't need them in the GZ Doom uh, directory anymore. So now we'll open up our ZDL zip and just extract the ZDL EXE from there. After that, we'll create a new folder and call it Doom Mods, just to keep everything nice and organized. Uh, we'll open up the Brutal RAR and grab the Brutal V21 PK3 and put that into Doom Mods. Same with Totem Far's extension. Uh, we'll just the PK3, drag that into our Doom Mods directory. DHTP alterations is a little bit different. Uh, we're going to grab the alterations PK3 and in the brightmaps directory we can grab all of these um, but if you're not planning on playing TNT or Plutonia you can suffice with just the HR brightmaps PK3. And smooth liquids I go with HQ liquids and all liquids glow um, but if you're on a lower spec system, you might want to try vanilla liquids instead of HQ liquids. You can see the size is a bit smaller, but it looks pretty much the same. And this warp one, BD and PB default, I think that's supposed to be for Brutal Doom and Project Brutality, but I haven't gotten that one to work uh, in a while, so I just leave that behind. And then Doom Metal Zip, we'll grab the wad out of that as well. We'll fire up ZDL. Uh, first off, we'll go to the General Settings tab under Source Ports, click the plus sign, and find our gzdoom.exe. Alternatively, we could just drag and drop that in there as well. Um, for the IWADs, we will do the drag and drop because it's a bit easier. So drag and drop any Doom, any base Doom wads you might have. Notice Sigil isn't a base Doom wad, it, uh, it uses Doom 1 or Ultimate Doom. So leaving that one behind. Once you've got your IWADs and your source ports all set up, we can go back to launch config. And external files is where we're going to put our Doom mods. So just select all of those and then drag and drop 
in there nice and easy. Um, ZDL, it's important to have uh, the launch order correctly. So Brutal Doom should be at the top. And then Totem Fars uh, extension, uh, because it replaces some things in Brutal Doom. So Brutal Doom will load first. Totem Fars extension will load after it, replacing anything it needs to in Brutal Doom. Um, that's important. So say you're playing uh, Sigil, or say you want to play Sigil, uh, and you want the Sigil Shreds music that comes with the retail. And if you have that load before Sigil Wad, the Sigil Wad also has custom music, and that will replace Sigil Shreds music. But if you want the Sigil Shreds music, uh, which comes with the retail version, instead of the Sigil default music, you're going to want to load that afterwards. But for now, we'll just turn those off. You can leave them in the uh, in the menu, but just temporarily disable them by using the little uh, triangle icon there and selecting them. Um, but uh, for Brutal Doom, you want Brutal Doom at the top most of the time. Totem Fars after Brutal Doom if you're using that one. And any texture or um, uh, music wads loaded after those two. Um, with DHTP, uh, you want to load it XYZ. Doesn't matter if the Ys or the Zs are mixed up. So I could uh, switch those around. That doesn't really matter as long as Y become, comes before Z and X before Y. And that's really all you need to do. We'll try that out. Oops. Uh, important thing, you need to select the IWOD in the IWOD category before launching. So we'll select Doom 2. Now we can hit launch and it works. So we can see uh, Totem Fire's extension is loaded, as well as Brutal Doom. We'll get into a new game here. Looks like the DHCP texture textures have loaded as well. Now with uh, the first load of Brutal Doom, we're going to want to go into our options, customize controls, and you may need to rebind your reload and flashlight keys. as well as roll left, roll right. These aren't really necessary, but it's kind of a fun Brutal Doom thing. And Totem Fars um, also has some special keybinds you can set if you want to. Uh, back out and then into Brutal Doom options, BD performance options, you need to set this to single player, uh, the single player engine. Uh, max wall decals and max gibbs and blood pools uh, are pretty low by default. I like to kick them up to about 5,000. Um, again, if you're on a lower spec machine, you may need to lower this, especially if you notice frame drops after killing a bunch of enemies. Um, blood amount, I like to turn up to lots. Uh, that's personal preference. It goes all the way up to comical, which is pretty crazy. Um, enable janitor, that's another good option if you have uh, more of a potato PC. It'll remove all the gibbs and stuff after 30 seconds, which really helps uh, with your FPS. Um, spent casings and water ripple effects I leave on no. Um, in level options, sometimes uh, for certain wads uh, that aren't totally compatible with Brutal Doom, you may want to um, disable advanced decorative objects and the level enhancement system because that replaces some textures which sometimes doesn't play nice with uh, some custom wads that uh, have their own textures and decorative objects and such. But uh, for now, I'll leave those on. Uh, one thing I always turn off is footstep sounds. Again, that's personal preference. I just find them kind of annoying because they kind of clip and do weird stuff sometimes. Everything else is, uh, well, all of this really is personal preference, so feel free to toy around with it. Um, in BD Doom gameplay options, I always turn Rocket Launcher Backblast off because if you're playing in realism mode, uh, rockets will instantly kill you when you fire one if your back is too close to a wall, and I find that annoying. Uh, BD player options, nothing you really need to do here. The player gender only works in Zendronium. Um, it's a multiplayer thing. Uh, it doesn't work in GZ Doom, so you can ignore that setting. Um, the other settings you can play around with, but I leave them default. And in Totem Fire's extension options, this just allows you to enable and disable specific things for Brutal Doom and Totem Fire's uh, extension. I leave pretty much everything in here uh, default, but it's fun to take a look at and toy around with. Uh, that's pretty much it for configuring Brutal Doom and Totem Fires. Now we'll get into Reshade. So open up your Reshade EXE. 
Click here to select a game and manage its reshade installation. Reshade probably won't find it on its own, so you're going to want to hit Browse. Go to the directory where you have GZ Doom. Click the GZ Doom EXE and open it. Now uh, we're using OpenGL. If you're using Vulkan, obviously you're going to want to use the Vulkan shaders. I find that OpenGL has a lot more shaders, and it's it's what Doom use, or GZ Doom uses default anyway. So we'll click that one. Um, only the top two are selected by uh, default. If you click on a name, you can see what shaders are available in that pack. It'll link you to the, the GitHub page. So you can check out each one individually. Um, I usually just uh, enable Fubox and Dodans. Um, you can enable all of these. There's a million different shaders to try out. I'm just going to show you a few as an example. For every one you check, um, it'll download that specific pack and ask you about the uh, individual shaders for each pack that you might want to enable or disable. I just leave them all checked. So for every one that you uh, wanted to load, you're going to have to click OK as it downloads and loads them. Um, once it says reshade setup was successful, that means you're done. You can close reshade and launch GZ Doom through ZDL again. Note, uh, to get Reshade, you don't have to launch Z, uh, GZ Doom through ZDL. The Reshade will be applied every time you launch GZ Doom. I know it's successful when you get the uh, Reshade is now installed successfully up at the top left there. So we'll go into a new game and I'll demo some of the uh, shaders I like. Um, to open Reshade, you click the home button. Uh, I'm going to skip the tutorial for now, but if you've never used Reshade before, you might want to check it out. Um, at, on first launch, the, uh, the shaders won't be in any kind of order, so if you click active to the top, that'll sort them alphabetically, and it will also put to the top any shaders you have selected. So to start here, uh, I'm going to go with Filmic Bloom, Filmic Sharpen, FXAA, HDR, and maybe Vibrance. And then to keep track of those easier, click active to top. You can see them all there. Um, this is just an example. There's a million different shaders, and it's all personal preference. Some are kind of wonky. Some will uh, make the game pretty much unplayable. Some will add just, just simple things like crosshairs and stuff. Um, some enable like 3D settings. Some are just weird image overlays. There's a million of them. Feel free to play around with them. Some of them are pretty cool. You can configure each one individually down in this menu. I won't get into that now, but uh, there's a ton of different options for pretty much every shader. Let's play with that at your leisure. Uh, click the home button to hide that menu again. And again, just to bring it back up, it's just the home button on your keyboard. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you're ready to play the best looking version of any Doom mods you're trying to play. Uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial, so uh, have fun, and I'll see you in hell.